Hello and welcome to another episode of Spectrum Drama, where we take a look at the hottest posts on Spectrum for the week and give our opinions on them. So before we get started, don't forget we've got our competition running until the end of the month. So if you want to win that red armor set, then don't forget to comment on this and every other video between now and the end of the month for your chance to win. Let's get started. Okay, so first up, we've got a post from Astropithecus, I think, and it says, please, CIG, do something about the leaks. I understand that many people enjoy that, but not all of us. Uh, we are also others who prefer to discover everything within the game by ourselves, etc., etc. Basically, um, stop putting out pictures of the new characters, new ships, um, you know, stop talking about things that aren't out yet. Um, essentially, you know, don't leak stuff. Uh, because some people don't want to see it. Um, I mean, <laughs> that's the only way you get people's attention is to show them snippets. That is, you know, that's what trailers are for for films. I mean, right, fair enough, they show you a picture of a new character, but you don't know anything about that character yet. Um, I think the really the, the long and short of it is just um, maybe don't look where the leaks are. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, this this basically came from like Reddit and Twitter. Uh, there's loads of sort of. Uh, leaked screenshots from the Evakai members yeah. uh, doing the rounds at the moment. And I mean, I'm kind of with him, you know, um, being an Evakai member myself, we sign an NDA to not leak stuff. Yeah. Um, so whoever is doing it is kind of making the rest of us look a bit bad. Uh, I understand why people want to see the stuff. That's okay for them. Yeah. Me personally, uh, I, I don't see the real point of it. Uh, a lot of people have sort of seems to be using this for like I don't know what you call it, um, social media uh, likes. I guess is is all they're after because yeah. it's really all they're getting out of it. Um, you know, it, it's not stuff that we know isn't coming in the game. You know, everyone can see the roadmap. You know, it's coming. So um, why bother really? Yeah. I mean, I see it from that point of view. I mean, obviously, Eva Carty members should not be leaking anything. That is part of an NDA. You sign that, you make an agreement with CIG that you will not divulge information until they're ready for it to be divulged. That's why you sign. Um, so breaking that agreement not only makes you a douchebag, um, but it also makes you liable for for a suit. You know, they could sue you. So, um, you know, people need to start being a bit smarter. <laughs> but... Um, I mean, you know, CIG leaks stuff all the time. I mean, they're always showing little snippets of things that they kind of poke out there and go, look at that, not yellow. Ha -ha. And that's fine, that's fine. I mean, these types of leaks, yeah, fair enough. You can't, you can't avoid leaks if they creep up on you. But I think people are right that you need to um, maybe just... I mean, but yeah, basically, if, if you don't really want to sort of see these sort of leaks, I mean, Reddit... Uh, you you you're in a minefield anyway because reddit is built on speculation people just love to go on there and go oh, i think it's going to be this and you know so that's that's your mainstay for having everything spoiled um but i think you can't really avoid it because people are always going to want to go i saw it first um and then put a screenshot out um all we can hope is that these people get their asses sued off them um and learn their lesson yeah yeah there is the opinion that if you if you don't want to see any leaks, then don't go looking for them. Um, but unfortunately, you just seem to they just pop up on Twitter now. Yeah, um, various um, star citizen content creators are sort of posting them around, um, and that's fair enough. You know, if you don't want to see it, then you, there are ways you can not see them. Um, I have personally un, um, stopped following a few people just because of it because I don't want to see it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is that option. So until CIG actually do something about these leakers, then that's really the only thing you can do. Yeah. Cool. So next up, we've got a post from Lil Black, and it says CIG should make VoIP sound on by default. Um, basically, game feels empty with people just walking around and just using chat. VoIP is off by default, so some new people might not even know it's off. You know, they might not know that there's actually a way to turn it on so a little hint telling you to turn on VoIP and how to push the talk would be good 
what do you guys think was basically the question um, I think yes I think that that is a good idea um, I think that it is a quiet place when you walk around inside a space station or somewhere like that it just there's no you never hear a person ever um so um it would be it would be good um, but would you like the idea of people just being able to go past you yeah you're a dick <laughs> yeah that's kind of the problem is people on the internet um, yeah we've had that a few times in uh, i think it was planet side where people just like had their push to talk pressed and they were playing music yeah, yeah. couldn't get away from them I mean, it can be annoying. Yeah, definitely. If there was an option to mute individual people, maybe that would sort of help help the ones that don't want to hear the crap. Yeah. And I know you can do that in some first-person shooters um, when you're in the lobby. You can't. I don't know if you can do it in game. You probably can. But like, uh, I know for a fact in Call of Duty, um, you can do that where you can actually go in and, and mute certain players. Especially like, you, you know, if you get these um, squealers or people with like really hot mics. Um, which literally just sounds like they've swallowed their microphone and are just screaming at you from their stomach. You know what I mean? It's awful. Um, so um, it would cure those sorts of problems. But um, yeah, I, I, I agree that I think that VoIP should be something that's made a little bit more prominent because um, I think a lot of people are just so eager to just get in their ship and fly around and then when they get to where they're going, they're just, ah, business, business, all business. Um, and I quite like the idea of like maybe walking up to one of those pool tables in Hurston and there being people there who just fancy a chat or something. I just don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. See, there is the other one. If, if you come across someone out in the, the wilderness and you want to say something to them, but they don't have the web turned on, yeah, that could cause a situation, I guess, as well. Um, I know there's been a few incidents at Jump Town where people have tried to sort of ransom someone shipped back to them but they can't hear the, the voice chat so yeah yeah I mean that's that's a thing I mean if you're you know you kind of need it either on for everyone or don't bother because yeah if you've got one person who's got a microphone and says you know like give me all of your stuff and the other person's you know they're going tick -tick -clack, click -tick -clack, click -tick -clack, trying to type to you it's like oh really yeah. Um, some people do want to role play a bit in this game and I, I like that I like the idea if I'm going to get pirated I want to get pirated by someone who actually talks to me um, but um, I think that I think it's going to be um, very hit and miss with the, the voice chat in this game yeah okay so next up we've got a post from Flair and it says kind of disappointed about the no new rover in the Carrick uh, concern needs clarification um, so I'm going to breeze over this a little bit. It's quite a lot to, to read. Um, essentially, from what Flair has gathered, um, apparently the Carrick will now <laughs> only have um, an Ursa rover um, as part of the package rather than having its own Anvil-branded um, Ursa like rover, um, which is something that we... I think I've talked about before and it's something that you know we were quite interested in it's quite it's, it's a good idea to have their own their own branded style of rover you know for their ships um, so now they're saying that this is just going to be an Ursa which everyone's already seen um, I mean whether or not that was going to change much about the game um, but you know obviously as far as the immersion goes that's what people want that you know they buy a Carrick they want the Anvil branded version of their rover to drop out the bottom not a different ship's make, you know, so I kind of see that, but I think that this is a little bit confusing because um, it's not 100%, this is all speculation, so we're not 100% not saying this is how it's going to be, um, but from what Flair has dug up, this is what it's looking like. Um, I mean, I think you know a little bit more about this than, than I do. What, what's, what's happening so far? As far as I can gather, someone has mentioned, I think it was Disco Lando uh, mentioned it in an ATV that the, the Carrick will come with an Ursa rover, but the ship was originally sold with uh, um, an Anvil rover, mm. um, which makes sense. You, there, there's no reason why Anvil, the manufacturer, would use an, uh, a, a competitor's vehicle or their you know exploration ship. It, yeah, it's a bit odd. Um, yeah, I, I want to see an Anvil rover. 
there's no reason why we would have just one rover in the whole universe. You know, we've got like how many ships now? Yeah. And a couple of land vehicles. They're going to flesh out the land vehicles at some point. Um, maybe he, maybe Disco Lando said that as, as like a, when the Carrack comes out, uh, you won't have the Anvil Rover, but you'll be given an Ursa Rover until we make the Anvil one. Yeah, placeholder. Maybe you just misspoke. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's what they've done with a lot of things where, you know, they've said, right, you've bought this ship, but obviously that's not available yet. So here's a little placeholder for you to keep you occupied, you know. Um, and that makes sense because um, the last thing you want is when they bring out the ship, they go, well, no, the rover's not ready yet, so you don't get anything. Um, because people will poo their pants. Te- <laughs> yeah. technical, technical term, they will poo their pants over that. So, um, yeah, that makes sense, actually. If uh, I hope that's what it is. I hope that it's just a placeholder until they get the Anvil Rover, because, like you said, it makes absolutely no sense for this huge um, ship manufacturer to go, right, well, we couldn't possibly make our own Rover, so let's use our competitors and just dump it in there. <laughs> just... Yeah, yeah. Makes, makes no sense. Um, and having multiple rovers, I mean, it's not like we're saying we need one for every ship. You know, we just, that's two. That's only one more than one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I really do hope that they don't, you know, backtrack and um, and just go, you know, good enough. Yeah. I'd be very interested to see what an Anvil rover would look like, actually. What sort mm. of um, equipment and features that, that sort of thing would have. Definitely. I kind of hope it goes sort of uh, along the, the, you know how like a lot of the Anvil ships are quite um, sort of, I don't know what the word is. They've got that kind of real... Chunky. F- yeah, chunky, futuristic, <laughs> but quite, you know, meaty look. And I just think yeah. that that would come across really well in a rover. It would look like, a, it would look awesome. So, um, yeah, don't, don't, don't mess with our dreams, CIG, and make it. Yeah. Okay, so last up, we've got a post from Aaron T. And it says, I give up on screenshot contests. Lol. Uh, Many excellent shots with one vote. Three guys in their underwear has 64 votes to each of their own. Um, And I have seen these pictures and um, I've seen some of the awesome shots that the the community is capable of getting. And then when you get a shot that's just... I mean, don't get me wrong, it's funny, but it's not that fun it's not you know 64 votes funny so um it's a bit of a shame the way our minds work <laughs> yeah i think this he's referring to the um st patrick's day uh, contest yeah right? i think so yeah that's the one i'm thinking of anyway yeah i mean yeah that kind of yeah three guys in the run to wear <clears throat> well, i wouldn't really say it's st patrick's but um it's kind of funny i suppose yeah yeah um very Irish. No offence, Irish. Very, yeah, yeah, very <laughs> Irish. So I've also kind of given up on the whole screenshot contest idea, um, mainly because it's usually the same sort of people that win the thing anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you, you tend to have um, this core group that that's kind of what they're doing when they're playing, really. They're just going out, taking this amazing footage. Um, and I, I mean, uh, you, at no point should you ever say, hang on, you won last time, you can't win again. But, um, yeah, I don't know, it does feel, it feels a little bit lopsided. Um, You know, the, um, I think it's more, maybe a little bit of a popularity contest as well. Yeah, these these kind of contests have, uh, like, uh, a lot more problems than just, you know, someone sticking a photo up there of some guys in their underwear. Yeah. Um, There's a lot lot of other problems with how they're, um, how they run, uh, what, what the sort of timings that they do these. Yeah, um, it's, it's very geared towards sort of the American time zone as opposed to like the English or Australian or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, the other problem is that they allow people with uh, to use Photoshop for these pics as well, which kind of it's another sort of skill gate. Um, just to people that are really good with Photoshop. Yeah. And they win it. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be allowed because I can take, um, with enough, with, with, with a couple of hours of mess about time, I could take the most boring photo and make it look epic because it's fake. 
um, you know, and I mean, if for example, if I I could if if I took I, I used to I used to be a, like a phot- I'm air quoting a photographer. I had a camera. It was quite expensive, and I loved it. And I took a lot of photos, and I took some really crap photos. But then I put them in Lightroom, and all of a sudden these photos were like you know I could put them in a gallery. They were that good, um, just because I just. I edited them after the fact, you know, um, and there's a lot of famous people who say if you can't get it in the camera, then don't get it at all. And that's the way this competition should be. It should be if you can't take that screenshot and make it look epic just from the game, what's the point? Because what is the point in the contest if not to show how amazing the game looks? <laughs> it's daft. Yeah. It's a screenshot contest, not a Photoshop contest. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I just I can't I can't fathom why CIG would allow um, the editing of these screenshots. Um, you know, because all, all the people are doing is changing the game. You know, they they're taking what looks perfectly fine to me. I mean, I've seen some screenshots unedited that are unbelievable. I mean, even people in our Discord have posted pictures of them just doing random stuff, and it looks amazing. So there's absolutely no need for it and um, I think CIG need to put their foot down and say look you know let's keep this clean um, and then let's keep the skill level even um, so everyone can get involved as it becomes a bit elitist otherwise okay so last up we've got a post from the job the job the job the yeah job. the job <laughs> the job uh, and it says Drake the frontiersman shipmaker um, so basically, um, this post is kind of, it's really not a question. It's not a statement. It really is just telling you what all the ships are in a way. Um, but it's quite ship interesting. Yeah. Basically it's just sort of saying this is the kind of styles the ship manufacturers use. Um, I, j- just to give you a quick overview, Origin RSI are civilian ship makers mostly, um, MISC being the main industrial transporter which is true, and I love them very much. Uh, Anvil, Aegis, main military uh, UEE presence. Uh, Misk, Drake, Consolidated Outland tends to be militia duties, you know, Buccaneers and Reliance and whatnot. Um, and then it goes on a bit talking about the Caterpillars, you know, um, for bulk transportation and how everything looks really bolted on, industrial parts and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's interesting, um, and I kind of see where you're going, but... Um, Where's the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, there, there is no real point to this post. It, mm. It's just sort of telling us um, everything we know about the ship manufacturers already. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, and how uh, the larger Drake ships are kind of the uh, sort of home away from home type ships. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay. I agree. I like Apart it. from that, yeah, it doesn't really go anywhere with it. Yeah, I mean, I like it, and and it's, I mean, the reason that um, we've kind of chucked this one on is just because it is quite nice. I mean, maybe if you're new to the game and you're not quite sure um, what each ship manufacturer is aiming towards, you know, and you think, all right, I want to get myself a military ship, well, then you know now maybe to aim for Anvil or Aegis, you know, along those sort of lines. So yeah. it's quite useful in that respect, and um, and it's well written, you know. So I like that, um, and um, I like the idea of this, um, you know, this home away from home. This, the, you know, the the um, um, sort of having this large ship, which maybe you, like he says, calls it little micro colonies. You know, um, having cargo base converted into living quarters and all that kind of stuff. You know, a garage in the nose. It's a good idea. Um, hopefully, this is doable in game. Um, I'm not sure at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's, um, but yeah, I like the idea of it. And, um, it does discuss the um, sort of modularity of the caterpillar, um, and we don't have any of that in game yet. And no. There's no sign of that for a while, or, or even if they're actually going to do that. Yeah, in the I end, so. that. I know they advertised it and said they were going to do it, but things change. Yeah, that's the problem. And I mean, you know, these things constantly evolve, you know, and um, they make one thing and then it kind of changes how another thing was supposed to react, you know, and uh, and you end up with, you end up sometimes having to lose stuff, which is a shame. 
but um, I do hope there is some form of modularity going on, you know, in the when when the game further a bit further down the line. Um, just because I like the idea of being able to take, you know, especially something like that big ship, which is kind of very much a, um, a kind of a, a mismatch of all sorts of stuff, and being able to kind of create your own. Um, almost like your own capital vessel. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like how you want to live in space. I like the idea of that, and I hope that that's doable. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good post, and like I said, it does give maybe new people an idea of where to aim for. So if you're looking for a particular type of ship, that's not a bad little guideline to go by. Um, and if you're looking for the best ship and the most awesome ship that's ever been made, then a freelancer, always a freelancer. <laughs> <laughs> I might be slightly biased. <laughs> I left a bit of a gap there because I thought you might jump in, but um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you agree, you agree. Come on, oh, that freelance has taken us around space. It's caused so many problems. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, no, nice, nice post, the job, and um, yeah, definitely useful. Okay, so there you have it. That's our posts for the week. Uh, we hope you've liked them, and we hope you find them informative. Uh, if you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more Star Citizen content. And don't forget, we've got that competition running, so make sure you comment, leave all your comments down below, and uh, I will definitely come back and moan at you, uh, I'll definitely argue with you, um, and it will be fun. So uh, yeah, definitely leave us some comments and you could win that red armor set. I think that's pretty much it for this week, so thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye.